Hello, this is Tony Heller from RockClimateScience.com. This graph is from NASA's sea level web page. The black line is supposed to represent sea level data from tide gauges. And the orange line is supposed to represent sea level data from satellites. In this video, I'm going to focus on the tide gauge data. NASA shows that sea level rose very slowly from 1950 to 1995. According to NASA, the rate of sea level rise from 1950 to 1995 was less than one millimeter per year. But according to NASA, something dramatic happened around 1995 and the rate of sea level rise suddenly quadrupled. NASA shows that sea level rise from 1995 to 2018 was about 3.3 millimeters per year. This is purported to be tide gauge data, so if we look at the individual tide gauges, we would expect to see this break in slope around 1995. So let's take a look at the individual gauges. This graph shows 10 of the longest term tide gauges from the NOAA database. A couple of things stand out. The first one is that the rate of sea level rise, if there's any, is very low. The average is less than one millimeter per year. But the more important observation for this video is that there's no break in slope at the year 1995. NASA showed a quadrupling of sea level rise rates from before 1995 to after 1995. But that break in slope in 1995 does not exist in the actual tide gauge data. The rate of sea level rise in Wismar, Germany is very low, and there's no break in slope at 1995. There's no break in slope at... Abolatsabo, Japan. There's no break in slope in the Netherlands, either. There's no break in slope at 1995 in Finland. There's no break in the slope at 1995 in Australia. There's no break in the slope at 1995 in Canada. There's no break in the slope at 1995 in Sweden. And there's no break in the slope at 1995 in Hong Kong. There isn't any legitimate evidence that sea level rise rates have accelerated. Yet NASA claims that tide gauges show sea level rise rates quadrupled after 1995. But as we've just seen from looking at all those global tide gauges, this claimed break in slope from NASA does not actually exist. NASA simply made a fake tide gauge graph to try to match their satellite data. The satellite data has a completely different set of problems, but that's a topic of a different video. The bottom line is that global sea level rise rates are very low, and there's no indication of an acceleration. The actual data does not support claims from NASA and other people pushing sea level scare stories. I've looked through dozens of different tide gauges and none of them show this break in slope at 1995. If something dramatic did happen at the year 1995 and sea levels started rising much faster as NASA claims, it would be visible at every single tide gauge in the world. But the reality is that the break in slope in 1995 doesn't exist in any of them. It's just a fake creation from NASA. And it's not just NASA that's misleading the public. NOAA is doing it as well. I'm going to finish this up with showing how NOAA is moving the goalposts on their predictions. This graph shows predicted sea level rise rates at New York City. NOAA produced six different predictions for sea level rise in New York. The extreme prediction, high, intermediate high, intermediate, intermediate low, and low. But actual sea level rise in New York was below even their lowest prediction. Note that in this graph, the different predictions started to diverge around the year 2000. This is the version of the graph which NOAA published in 2019. Their predictions were failing rather badly, so they changed the graph. In the new version of the graph, the predictions don't diverge until around the year 2030. They've pushed the goalposts back about 30 years. The problem with these predictions is that they are based on superstitions about the relationship between carbon dioxide and climate. 
But NASA is undaunted by the failure of their theory. When their theory wasn't working, they simply made up some fake data. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the climate scam for the past 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.